What's up guys, Evil Deer here. So today I'm going to speak to you about my first day in the army. Now I have spoken in previous vlogs about me being in the army for six years, but for those who are new to this channel, I was in the army for six years. Yes, I'm an Esperantist, yes, I'm a pacifist, but I was also in the army for six years. Don't know how that works, but it just does. Wow, I just did one of the uh -uh type things. Anyway, so my first day in the army. Now, I was 17 at the time, and I remember that my parents drove probably like three hours to get to the Hobart airport because we lived really far from Hobart. And for those who don't know, Hobart's the capital of Tasmania, and Tasmania's just a massive freaking island hanging off the bottom of Australia. But anyway, so they drove to the airport, they dropped me off um, with all these other little kitties, you know, turning into adults, going off to join the army. There wasn't that many of us actually, there was only like two of us. Why did I say so many kitties? But there was two. Anyway, so I went to go on the plane. I'm just about to hop on the plane because literally there's this building and you walk through it and then it's just open tarmac to the plane. You just like walk up onto the plane type of thing. There's no like massive terrorist t detection or anything like that there. Anyway, so I'm just about to get on this plane. My dad just pulls me aside and he's like, son, today you're going to become a man. I'm like, yeah, I know that dad. I'm off to join the army. Of course I'm going to become a man. And he's like, no, 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 son. Take one of these look after it and it was a condom he was holding his hand and I was like oh, we're having this conversation now haven't you neglected me all this time and now you're telling me this and he's like just just hold on to it you may have a use for it and just to, just so you guys know that thing literally rotted my wallet I never found a use for it god that's so sad but anyway so um I get up onto the plane and I'm on the plane there's this one other little skinny dude right next to me he's literally my skinniness at the time we were like both 55 kilos and he's like, arms are like freaking, you know, toothpicks. And he's like, yeah, come on, we gotta join the army. And now for all those out there thinking, well, hang on, don't, isn't the army like big, tough, meaty dudes type thing? Well, surprisingly, no. Like, they have these physical tests where you've got to go through like this running, this push-ups and stuff. But if you can lift your own weight and run far enough, they don't care what size physically you are as long as you can handle yourself. So it was me and this one other little skinny dude on this plane. And the whole way he's like, yeah, I'm gonna smash this, yeah, it's gonna be awesome, yeah. Oh, by the way, if you watched my previous vlogs, yeah, if you did, well, the guy that I randomly fly kicked in my previous vlog, this is this dude that was sitting right next to me. <laughs> I don't know how this guy ended up next to me, but anyway. So, yeah, we fly there, it takes like three hours, we land in Melbourne, they put us up in this, like, hotel for the night before the bus is meant to come pick us up with all the other people from Melbourne that day. You know, they're flying in from Perth and all those other locations. So we're staying in this hotel and we get this like nice meal and I'm like, whoa, this is awesome type of thing. And the little dude that was with me, he's like on the ground going, eh, 20, eh, 21, eh, 22, ah, 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 23, ah, 24, 25, oh man, I'm so strong type of thing. And you know, at the time we're all like, that is pretty, that's pretty beefy. Anyway, so it was just me and him in this other room. We were like the Tazzy boys. And there was just like this little fridge, uh, like the bar fridges that you have in there. And there's like some chocolate in there. And I, I love chocolate. Like I've been starved of chocolate up until this point because my parents never brought it. That's probably a lie. I hope mum and dad doesn't watch this. But anyway, so they had chocolate in the fridge. And I grabbed some and I ate it. But then I felt really guilty. I'm like, does the army pay for this fridge or do I have to pay for it? So like literally just before we left, I just left a couple of dollars laying on the bench because I wasn't sure what to do and I didn't want to ask anyone in case they'd go, you can't eat the chocolate. But anyway, <laughs> that was my biggest worry that day. So we, we cocked it, we went to bed and then the next day this bus rocks up. It's just a standard bus, nothing special, it doesn't have like, oh, I'll be the edge across the side of it, but it's just this bus. And there's all these other dudes, you know, all in civilian clothes like myself. I wasn't exactly wearing this at the time. Oh God, I didn't even button this up correctly. Sorry about that guys. Yeah, that's, that's terrible. But anyway, so we're all waiting for the bus and out hops this great big warrant officer. Now, for those of you who don't know military structure, warrant officer is like the highest direct entry soldier that they can get to. So it goes like corporal, sergeant, warrant officer, and then there's like a few little ranks in between, but that's pretty much it. And then if you want to get above that, you have to join the army as an officer. And that means you gotta go for uni and all that type of stuff. But anyway, so he's warring off, so that means he's been in for at least 15 to 20 plus years. So this guy gets off the bus, this big bloke, like not muscly, just big, physically built. And he's like, hop on the bus, little boys. You know, like, he actually sounded like freaking Santa Claus. He wasn't that bad of a bloke. And everyone's like, oh, okay. So we'll get on the bus, we're taking our little bags, and the whole way, heading inland, because the, the army training base, the initial one, is located far inland. 
And the whole way inland, he's like, oh, this is gonna be great. You're gonna be trying new technology. You're gonna get to shoot guns. You know, you guys are gonna be, you're gonna be protecting the country. It's gonna be all awesome. And he's like chatting to us individually as if we're like his best mates type of thing. And we're like, wow, man, we can really dig this. This is awesome. He's telling us all the type of stuff we wanna hear. And we approach the army barracks, okay? And it's got this big gate in front of it. And you don't actually recognize it at the time, but when you've been in there for six weeks, as we had, it stops being a gate and turns into like the prison entrance where they shoot escapees, but they don't actually shoot people, but that's what you get mentally. So you're going up to this gate and there's this statue. I can't remember exactly what it was. I just remember it stuck in my mind. So, but as soon as we pass that statue, the warrant officer just beforehand, he's like, yeah, it's gonna be great. And as soon as we pass the statue, he just went, like that, his face just dropped and he just stopped talking. Everyone's like, uh, uh, what's going on? And he just stayed like this, like literally just quiet for like the next minute until the bus pulled up, obviously at like the main headquarters in this base. And the door opens up and he turns at us all and he looks at us and goes, get the fuck off the bus! And we're all like, ah! Type of thing and we're like, ah! And suddenly his just demeanor just changed from this chatty nice old bloke to this, I'm gonna rip your freaking legs off and feed it to the goat type of guy. And we're all just getting off this bus and he's like, get off now you pieces of beep 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 beep! Type of thing and we're all like, ah! Running off the bus and we're all like, somehow getting all lined up and stuff and this guy's just walking in front of us like, full on arms behind his back on. you guys are the most disgusting pieces of beep I've ever seen type of thing. And we're like, whoa, man, this is like some hardcore type of stuff that you see in the movies, this ain't real. And some people are like, <laughs> like laughing almost because it doesn't seem so serious. And then as soon as they get seen that they're like, hey. and then he walks around and he's like, why are you laughing at? And it's like, you can literally see the spit going across his face. And he's like, oh, I'm taking it type of thing. Like some really dodgy porno or something. But anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so they line us all up and they just give us this equipment like they go this is your life from now on You have like five minutes a day to call your mother to cry about your life And it's like oh type of thing Anyway, so they take us off and they divide us off into like these little platoons And at the time you just you just straight up get these like PT clothes You don't even get military clothes. It's really like demeaning. They give you this like I can't remember if it was a white or a grey, but this white grey shirt with like red pants or something, it's like, or black pants, I can't remember, but it was the most spastic looking thing ever, it's like one of those things you see in a really bad music video. But anyway, they give us these clothes, and they take us off to this building, and the whole time you just, you, we're all just like, kind of like, attempting to march to this building as they're yelling at us, saying, left, right, left, no one knows what that means, we're just like, uh, uh, and we get to this freaking building, and they line us up in front of these rooms, and there's like, as I said in my previous video, it's just a hallway and it's just room, 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 room. And we're all lined up in front of these freaking rooms, okay? And I'm standing here like this, like, following what everyone else is doing. Everyone else has got their arms behind their back, so that's what I'm doing. I don't know anything about the military. So I'm just lying here, standing up, and the other guy's standing opposite me, and we're both like, uh, was this the best choice we made? And the guy, there's this, this corporal who comes down the end of the hall. So the warrant officer's gone at this point. He's obviously yelled enough for one day and he's probably off to have a, a smoke or something. But anyway, this corporal comes walking down the hallway and he stops at each soldier. So he's like, ch -ch -ch, looks at you, looks down, looks up and goes. And he's looking at these massive blokes, okay, like these gym built blokes that had come from other places in Australia. And he's like, I've seen pieces of shit bigger than you, my friend. You won't last a week here. And then he just walks to the next bloke, and he do, they just stop at each bloke, and they just insult him, and they come up to me, and he looks at me, and I'm 55 kilos at the time, man, I'm not military material, and he's looking at me, and he goes, I'm disgusted to even think that I'd let you in here, and he walks on, and I'm just thinking, well, fuck you, motherfucker. I, I probably should have beeped that bit out, sorry. Uh, well, fuck you, you mother, beep, beep. Oh, God, I missed the first one, God damn it. Anyway, so, they're just yelling at us, and then, Literally, I'll tell the rest of the military stories in, uh, in the next videos, but that was my first day. So I was just getting yelled at, and we'd arrived in the morning at this point, and we're just standing in the hallway getting yelled at, and then getting handed equipment and stuff. And then from there, they took us off to like this big parade ground where they, they just um, gave like this speech or something about you know military. I can't remember at this point. Everyone's just like, should are we allowed to like breathe? Do we have to ask permission for this? You know, it's literally just just like that, like everything is monitored and you're just, if you've ever seen Metal Jacket, like the movie, it's like that, but more evil, like seriously, it's more evil. 
<laughs> and you find out later on why they do that, okay? Um, and I actually, you know, I'll tell you now why they do that. The, the reason being is, you don't know this when you come in straight away, but the reason being is everyone comes in with their own set personality. And what they want to do is instantly just break it down, just smash your personality into personality into bits and take it apart and bring out the raw you. And then they want to build on that and build a soldier because everyone comes in with their own little fears and their own like preconceptions about how good they are and stuff like that. But then they just come along and they just, they literally just take it all off, just bit by bit. And then they say, this is the new you and this is what we expect and everyone's identical. And they pretty much drum that into you by giving you a number. Like you still have your name and eventually your name's like, well your surname is along um, your, your bit of clothing, but you get a number, everyone gets a number. You ask any military guy who's been out for like 20 years, they have a number and they know their number. Like literally, just friggin' um, two weeks ago I had to call up about my military superannuation because I was trying to like roll it into something else and I'd been out of the military by this point for friggin' six years or something and the first thing they said is, what is your number, you know, basically. And I'm like, Bleh! Like, it just instantly came out. I knew my number. So yeah, that is my story of the first day in the army. So if you like this story, you want to hear more crazy stories from me, just share the shit out of this video. Tell me, you know, comment. Do something spastic. I don't care. Just, yeah, tell me. And I'll make more videos. And I hope to see you in the next video. And if not, well then you're not good enough to be here.